Hello, welcome back, my name is Literally Dead, and today I have a new game mode for you guys. Well, it's not really new, I'm just doing it for the first time for this channel. It is the Tower of Trials content. I'm finally going to start doing that. Maybe I'm going to get through the first five floors for this for this video, and then maybe af as we go on throughout the week, I'll be able to do all of them, but I'll just see how we do in this first one, and we'll go from there. I'm just going to keep this pretty chill, do a little explanation, have gameplay run in the background, but... Yeah, it's going to be pretty fun. I hope you guys enjoy it. So without further ado, let's just talk about these teams. So for the first five floors or the dead struggle, basically the debuff, it grants five mighty blocks to a stunned enemy. We're going to definitely try to avoid that. And then there's a blessing of shadows for all of the shadow people. Those are the specific heroes under the shadow class, aka Mara, Laika, Kane, Ren, Nira, Rai, Kathy, and Ophelia. So you would definitely get a big boost if you use one of those heroes. I decided to use Rai for the first half, and then I decided to use Ren for the second half. For Rai, I'm going to do Insignia and Mask. Keep in mind, I'm going to use Insignia and Mask for pretty much all of them. And the Void Relic for this one because of Rai's you know, innate ability to do that with her dummies. And then for the altars, I have 15 points to the altar of blacksmith and 10 points to the altar of mage. You know, with blacksmith, you can get more stuff for the forming, and then with mage, you can have her use her ability more and more. Now, when I make my equipment, or I, when I form, I want to make sure I get a tier 7 rye as quick as possible. And I'm going to keep it safe, and I'm going to put in a lily in the front just to be like an extra tank. You don't have to if you think you're you're going to be totally fine, you probably will be. I'm just doing it just in case if you are struggling, you can definitely do it this way. For equipment, I want to make sure I get a bunch of tier 4 equipment and I'll get like two staffs, maybe one bow or even three staffs for my Rai. That way she could do a bunch of damage and will go completely insane. I also don't really care about bows all that much just because because of my relics I have like a ton of speed from like the affixes. I mean if you don't have that that's totally fine just give her a bow. Now for the second half I have my Ren. I'm gonna use Ren for the second half for these and the relics I'll be running will be the insignia and shield like usual and the shield relic. The shield relics you know just like a nice protection all that good stuff but Ren does a really good job because she stacks mighty blocks as she attacks which is really cool or as she uses her ability anyways uh let's see here the altars i'll be running will be 15 blacksmith again for the forming and then 10 points to the altar of blood for that good old hp attack drain yeah that good stuff and it helps kind of but it's pretty easy on these first five floors so i i'm just doing it because you should probably do it anyways ren is plenty capable on her own so i'm just gonna be using her and her mask counterpart for equipment it really doesn't matter all that much but personally i like to do two staffs and one bow again get that attack speed going on and have those bows just to do a bunch of damage with her skill but other than that these bandit guys aren't a big deal at all they you know they're pretty chill uh you have to look out for that one specific floor with those big executioner bandit guys who are right at the very front if you are kind of concerned about that because they could knock your guys back you could move your units back so that they have a fighting chance. Sometimes if you're not prepared, it could just mess you up, but other than that, this isn't a big deal. There's not like a lot that you have to think about. It's pretty, pretty easy. Oh, and I forgot to mention what uh, the miracle, right? The miracle. There are three options. There's transcendence, which casts a skill twice for every third skill cast. There's alchemy, which you spend a certain amount of silver to obtain a philosopher's stone, which converts a piece of equipment you own to a random piece of equipment of the same tier. And last but not least, there is unity, which increases damage by 10% per hero on the field, and the max is 60%, meaning you can only have 6 heroes for it to get the max benefit. Depending on what you go for, like if you're going for like a whole army type of strategy, you would definitely go for unity. I don't really see much use for alchemy, I don't see a lot of people using it. It could be useful in very specific situations, but this isn't one of them. I usually almost always go for transcendence because the casting skills twice for every third skill cast is just very useful. It will last you from floor 1 to 20 and you don't have to spend gems to get the other ones to be you know, like adaptive to specific heroes, specific bosses, specific floors. I mean, think about it like this, Rai heavily depends on her skill, so transcendence is almost a given for that, right? Casting a skill twice for every third skill cast, that's really strong. And I mean, like, I'm not- more power to you if you choose another one, I'm just saying that 
I'm just giving you suggestions, go for whatever you want to do. This is just the way I thought about doing it. There's definitely no end all be all. It's it's pretty fluid. You can choose a bunch of different strategies. This is just one of the strategies that I thought of where I just base it off of the blessing buffs based on class. And this is the best I can think of. And then there's the boss, Last Crusader. Uh, what's his name? Ofer? Ophirion? Yeah, dude, this guy's so fucking easy and basic. He becomes stronger when there are few heroes on the battlefield, but at the same time, it's floor 5 of 20. He's super simple, super basic. If you are still struggling, you can make a full-on army if you want. What you could do if you want to play it safe is you can use Gidnil to absorb all of those, like, magic hits, right? Because Gidnil creates magic mighty blocks, I believe, or spell mighty blocks, which is pretty cool, but... Yeah, it's. It, I don't think you should worry about that all that much. You do a lot of damage, and this guy is pretty easy. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, especially if you want to see more of this type of content. I know it's a little different than what I usually do, but it, hey, you know, it's something. So I hope you guys enjoy. Be sure to like and subscribe, and if you do, I'm definitely going to make more of this type of content. I'll try to get in floor 6 through 10, maybe sometime in a couple of days, and I'll try to be done with all 20 floors by the end of the week. I mean, I could get them all done and do like one day, one day, one day, one day like that, but it keeps you guys on your toes and makes my content more spaced out. <laughs> I'm just going to keep it real with you guys. I'm a little busy. And other than that, again, I'm stalling for so long. Thank you guys again. See ya.